is closing in on Coach K to become number one all time in NCAA Division I history. Home whites for the Cardinal, road blues for the Blue Devils. Next season, this would be a conference game as Stanford is in its final season in the Pac-12. They're off to the ACC next year with Cal and SMU. You see Duke in their man-to-man -man defense. And Carol Lawson wants you to be in the right place at the right time. That's what she's measuring, the growth of this young team. Offensive rebound, and the stick back is up and in for one of the breakout stars early in the season. Kiki Irioff and the 6'3 junior from L.A. as you check out the Duke starting five. You'll see Stanford man-to-man -man wise. They're going to try to keep Duke in front. They're going to force Duke to take those outside shots. It puts Stanford in great rebound and position. Second game in a row that Camilla Enspo is in the starting lineup. So they go 6-5, six, 6-6 six, six up front. And the turnover right away. Lineup for the Cardinals. They lost just the one starter. It was a big one. The All-American Haley Jones off to the WNBA. Uh, but this is a group that Tar Vanderveer says is happy and healthy. And really uh, in front of the curve early in this season as Brent has added that to a game this year. A great balance that Stanford has, having Cameron Brink knock the three down. You talked about the improvement of Arioff in number 44 inside. Great one-two punch in the front court. A couple of early turnovers for Duke. Brink running the floor, looking for the assist to Arioff. Got it up and in in traffic. There's a Stanford team that comes in Averaging 90 points per game and shooting 50% from the floor Bethany, in the early season. The teams that I've seen this season, there's a three for Duke, but it has been South Carolina and Stanford that look the sharpest already. For South Carolina, with a couple of big wins, as Lapolo gets the drive, come in with great talent, and as they catch up and get really comfortable with the speed of the game, they're going to be some forces to reckon with. Jaden Donovan in particular will come off the bench for Duke, one of the top five in the area often was a little bit hesitant and I asked her what was the difference this year. She said I have a lot of confidence. She really had a lot of really self-reflection in the sun. While at Stanford, Tara's been here for 38 of those. 38 years. You think of that. Wow. The three Maddies. She's in the Hall of the Match Stanford. UCLA, Utah, Colorado. It's been rough out on the West Coast for Pac-12 fans to see it. Time zone that I on live the in. East Coast, yeah. yes. <laughs> and see them more often. You're going to see the Stanford's, the UCLA's, the Arizona's, the Colorado's. Headed to the ACC, the Big Ten, and the Big 12. Here's Lapolo again off the bounce, looking for a shooter. Finds one. Air ball, but Erie often is there and draw to the other coaches in the league. They all talk about early in the season to find out where you're at and what you're weak at. This box for the three. And on the box out, Brooke Dimitri, the junior out of Foothill Ranch, California. Mike Donovan off the bounce. And another Deflections or rebounding the basketball and running. They've not been able to. have cooled off in the last two and they open up 0 for 2 today. Yeah, those first two games it was hot, hot, hot. The last two, not so much. And right on cue. Delaney Thomas, the freshman out of Charleston, West Virginia, hits for three. That's another one of those freshmen that are able to score. Look, they are capable shooters for Duke. It's just a matter of timing, when, where to take that shot. Oh, how about the face-off? She's not Duke. Expanding her skill set, she's already got 11 here in the first five minutes. Thomas with an offensive rebound. Knocked out before the Sweet 16. Like AP voters, you gotta be careful in that first poll coming out after the transfer portal. For third and again on December 10th for you. The 
the ACC SEC Challenge coming up at the end of November. Duke trying to find its footing. As Kara Lawson says, this is a young team early on. The pull-up jumper there, finding her spot. Really often has not missed yet. Five for five. She's a little bit of a Tene, a little bit of Neca, and a little bit of Asia Wilson. Oh, you look at her base. The strong from the waist down, and yeah. she's not afraid to play low, and she's quick off the floor. Little Stanford, South Carolina cross pollination <laughs> there for <laughs> Coach Peck. That is very good company to be in. Mayor able to hit the shot. Another program that's up and coming and learning to deal with the uh, All-American status. Freshman averaging double figures in the first four games. That paint looking at when it's her opportunity to be right there. Blocking shots. And the next evolution for Cameron is blocking shots without committing fouls. That's been a real emphasis for her. She wanted a touch right there. In that Indiana game, she got a block shot, brought it in transition, then got the assist, kick out for the three. They got her isolated. Facing up, 15 footer. That's it. Richardson off the bounce, the spin. And then Brent with the rebound and a grunt to go with it. You heard that. <laughs> Jump. Step back three. Got it. 7 0 run. And the ball with the offensive stick back. And three pass is picked off. There. No. And the ball offensive rebound. But was moved into the starting lineup the last couple of games. And I believe it's because of that. Her ability to get to the glass, create those second opportunities. Grad student from Yale, where she was all Ivy League. Here comes the double. Brink spins to the middle, got it. Looking for the and one, no whistle. Cameron Brick now seven points in seven minutes. And Mayer beats the buzzer to end the quarter. And they have the lead over the Blue Devils as we open up this second quarter, 30 to 17. Beth Bones and Carol and Peck with you here at Naples Pavilion. Uh, what, the way they looked against Indiana, they just got pretty much whatever they wanted against them. Pretty good. Indiana's a great defensive team. Nice pick and the pop. This dude starts to settle in a little bit. Very excited to see how they would respond. She understands how young this team is. She said she's only had has one player on the team that she has coached when the ball is in the middle of the floor. Stanford also runs some options off that Princeton offense as well. And now we have five on five. See, Duke is switching, and so LaPolo is down low against Thomas. There's a mismatch. But they don't find her. Ashlyn Jackson. But three bigs in the game now. Aguero, the freshman. Then you have Cameron Brink posting down low. So Cameron will sit perhaps for the final three and a half minutes here. Mayor knocked loose by the polo. Five on the shot clock. And they'll try another three and knock it down. Mayor can shoot it. We also have Alici Okonwa, who can be a threat. Cable can shoot it for Duke. Very often, step through on a foul. Double figures, 12 points in this first half. Against Hawaii, 23 points and 13 rebounds. 
They are having fun. They are unselfish. And Steph Curry told them to be stars in your role. And now they're starting very often. So quick with the first step, and Spo able to bother. Kind of fun about it. Thomas, well, she'll pass up the three and go off the bounce and count it. I like the decision. Get the high percentage shot first. They have been down by as many as 17. And look at this scoreboard. They're within seven. Under two minutes to go. Making a little push here without breaking the ball game. Good response by the youngsters. And a jump. They're feeling it. They, I think, feel it in the water that Stanford has something real special going on with this team this year. So she's got more three-pointers in this first half than she had her first three games. Which also speaks to their balance. They haven't necessarily needed it. Five on the shot clock for the Blue Devils. And a giveaway. It's a lot of rotation. And you got to with how they want to play with pace, the amount of energy that it takes and demands from you defensively. Very often fouled before the shot. Guard, I'm going to get the ball back. Right. Sit on 11 of their 15 buckets. Open three in transition for Duke. Those are the ones they want to capitalize on. Look who got the rebound. Oh, nice pass from Alucci. Nine points for Thomas coming in off the bench. That's freshman to freshman right there. And Thomas with two fouls. Last year to play with Cameron Green. Got to make the most of it. And a jump with 12, the only double-digit score is about three seconds the difference. Shot and game clock here for Duke to close out the first half. Duke going to run this stagger screen into a high-low action. Well, they missed Thomas open inside, but no worries for Mayer. Hits the shot. Good if it goes, Dimitri no. Listen, you don't get an assist if the big girls don't finish. <laughs> oh, we got a good one. Cameron Brink is back out there to start the second half. She uh, missed out on the last few minutes of the first half with a couple of fouls. Duke really settled down. A bit of shell shock, perhaps, in the early going for this young team. And boy, if they respond. I think they did a much better job rebounding-wise, taking care of the basketball. They didn't raise a score. Brink to Erie often. And the big triples in the first half. Blue Devils counter before the defense gets set. Can't knock down the jumper. Cameron Brink, one in the point. Three on one, Stanford. And an offensive foul. On the inbound, quick on the release. And aired by Richardson. Nunu Aguera has come off the bench, the freshman, to replace Brink, and here she is, the lefty for Tori Short. Looks like didn't have any rotation on it. Like a knuckleball, a little flat on the arc, too. Here we are. So quick with that first step to the left. 19 for Kiki on 7 of 10 shooting. Throwing the lane, got it. Eight points and four rebounds for the Blue Devils. Preseason pick to finish seventh in the league. The ACC is going to have some depth again this year. Stanford preseason pick to finish third in the Pac-12. A lot of folks high on UCLA and Utah. Of course, the Pac-12 right now has five teams in the top ten. The Kiki here often. I love this swing through and attack. You can't be hesitant. When you make your mind up to go and you can get your shoulders hit past the defense, you got to commit. Go all the way and get the finish. Coming in as the leading scorer for Duke at 12 points a game. 0 for 8 from the floor. That's one or two at the line. The polo. Hard off the back iron. Nice rebound by Jaden Donovan, and she'll push three on two. Goes to the left. 
and lays it up and in. Jaden's first bucket of the day. Dimitri in to Iriathan. I asked Tara to compare her to the Adidicates, and she's like, yeah, she Two of the all-time greats here at Stanford. And that's the third foul for her. So two Stanford starters with three fouls. Donovan. Scrapping for the loose ball. And Jaden whistled for the reaching. Dimitri can play out on the perimeter. Be in there. Be in there. Here he often rejected by Thomas. Sixth block here for Duke today. Jackson bangs home the three. Duke will not go away. It was a 10 point lead for Stanford when Brink went to the bench. It's now down to six. And Duke looking to cut into it even deeper. And Clardy with a big strip and then a foul. Yeah, that's uh, that kicks off just a huge week. Clardy has to shoot it to beat the shot clock buzzer. Duke creeping back into this game with two Stanford starters on the bench right now. Well, they're definitely looking to keep them here. This second and third quarter, they're a, they're a whole different team. The energy was all Stanford. They led it 30 to 17. Yeah, spent a lot of time playing three on three, Team USA over the summer. Such enjoy being the young kid. Mm -hmm. Really helped with her one-on-one -on -one skills at both ends of the floor. The kick out for three. One possession game. <laughs> How about you, Duke Blue Devils? Keep working, Luke. Brink, double comes, and she turns it over. In the paint, she shoot has got to be ready, and Ashlyn Jackson was exactly that. a 15 to 6 run since Brink's third foul. Carol Lawson said her team's got the capability. They got to make shots and they have done that today. Off the bounce, the drop off taken away. Mayor blocked by Brink on the over penetration and then she commits the foul. Hard in the bonus so Cameron Brink will head to the free throw line. For the first time today, she has made 62 in a row since last February. 75 is the NCAA record. And Cameron now with the fifth longest free throw streak in history. Well, you said it, I didn't. If she breaks the streak... <laughs> Just doing my job, Carrie. <laughs> We're all good. She's now at 64. <laughs> Three ball to tie it up for the first time today. <laughs> They've come all the way back from 17 down. Is this November? Because it's feeling like March. The steal and now looking for the lead. A huge third quarter for Duke. Well, hold for the last one. We got a roll and rise. Little zipper action. With Delaney Thomas coming up off the block. Jackson off the cross and a foul before. I'm very impressed with what Duke has done in these last two quarters. This is a team that could have come in here and been extremely intimidated with their youth, and they have really stepped into the ring. Their first lead of the afternoon. Eight seconds. Lapolo. Dimitri. Pulls up for three with the ankle breaker and comes up short. A 12-2 run for Duke, and they have the lead on the road heading to the fourth.
continue here in Palo Alto. Woo, let's Talked go. about it early on uh, the first two weeks of the season. Eight of the preseason top ten and 11 of the top 15 have already lost. And the Blue Devils working on something now. Richardson off the bounce. Big push coming when Cameron Brink got into foul trouble. And the blow by. Ashlyn Jackson in that Coastal Carolina game, she hit five threes and Carol Lawson was asked if she was surprised. She said, no, I know she can score the basketball and she has shown that today. Thank you. Enzbo picks up her third, four of the Blue Devils with three fouls. Brink able to clean up her first miss. Foul starting to mount on both sides now. Enzbo steps away from the hoop. Richardson again. Brink got a hand in there to knock it loose and it stays in play. Stanford can tie or lead. This is what you were talking about, fourth game in the last eight days, including a trip to New York City and now a trip out to the West Coast. Look, and Davidson, they're a good team. They beat Wake Forest, four points, a four-point loss to North Carolina. Well, they're going to be a team to reckon with. Jump. Got it. Her first basket of the second. Rip through by Donovan. And again, Brink gets a bothered shot. We need that stat for the shot blockers today. Now, can Brink get a tight offensively? The pressure on the perimeter by Duke, that's where it's got to go. And a four-minute drought for Duke. And Ari often goes to the table to check in. Jackson. Emsbo. Oh, my goodness. Brink got up again. Very often does check, uh, check back in. There's Ensbo at the line. Four and a half minutes. One for eight in this fourth quarter. Richardson only three points. Iriathan goes to the left hand and gets the bounce. Third option. That's when they were able to get the shots they want. Able to tip it to herself, please, for the Atlanta Dream. Now she's a little taller. A little taller. Championship game a couple years ago in Arizona. Hits on the second. Kennedy Brown defending on Erie Offen, trying to deny her the ball. Five on the shot clock. They're going to have to hustle. Nunu blocked. And a shot clock violation. Stanford will get Cameron Brink back on the floor at the next whistle. And Duke and the drought for a field goal that's six and a half minutes. And yes, they can. Jackson does it. So Brink's back out there, number 22 in white. And immediately, Stanford gets her a touch inside. Not just standing posting, but the flash. That's hard to guard. Thomas, we'll try for three. Okonawa, offensive rebound. She's inside deep. Stanford's going to come out with it. Okonawa, eight rebounds on the day. Ladies and gentlemen, she's 5'8". She's leading the Blue Devils in rebound. Take away for Duke. Look, running the floor again. Number five for the Blue Dew Devils. Jackson for three. Another one. This is what you want. Tie game coming up on two minutes to go. Jump. And a chance for the Blue Devils to take the lead. No timeout from Lawson. She wants him to play on. 
And Akanawa with a triple. Akanawa was calling for it, too. She wanted it. When you're feeling the shot, you call for it, you get it, then you knock it down. 10-2 run, and Tara wants a timeout. She was telling her team to calm down because she knows you got a young team. You can get all hyped up and get too hyped. You've got to just stay in the moment. Stanford has the possession arrow. They are already in the bonus. The Cardinal have a foul to give. Led by 17 in the first half and now down late. Aguera the kick out. Dimitri answers with a three. All right. Again, I got a what, what month is this? It's November. An early happy Thanksgiving present for everybody. One minute to go. Jackson. Gets it back. Thomas sets the screen. And rolls inside. Count it. Hannah Jump, you cannot give her an open three. You got to be ready to rotate. If the ball goes inside to Cameron Brink and then box out like your life depends on it. On the inbound to Lapolo. Aguera. And now they'll try and get Brink to that side of the floor. Ensbo trying to stay in front of her. Aguera gets Cameron a touch and a reach in foul on Ensbo from behind, and that's her fourth. And they'll make Brink try and tie it up from the line. Where Cameron Brink has made 64 free throws in a row. Talk about pressure. Conwell will check back in for Duke. And Clardy comes on for Hannah Jump. Erie Offen is also back into the game for Stanford. The shot clock, by the way, not a factor anymore. 21.8 to go. Points in the fourth quarter. Her free throw streak is at 66 in a row, and she's tied it up. Ashlyn Jackson has an option to shoot the basketball. They got to get it in. Yeah. Up top to Jackson. Chance for her last shot to win it. Defended by Lapolo. Jackson gets the screen up top. They leave her. She's got an open look, and it's off the mark. Scramble for the loose ball. Stanford's got it, and a timeout. Dimitri to inbound. The lob inside. Brink with the catch, and no foul. We are going to overtime. Cameron Brink will play on with four fouls. Emsbo and Kennedy Brown with four fouls for Duke. Brink gets a touch. Spins to the inside, in and out. Aguera, offensive rebound, no. Brink. Again, no, and it's tipped all the way back out to Duke. Here comes Mayer. Akanawa. Good ball fake. And she walked. Duke loses a key cod. And Cameron Brink, who has made 66 consecutive free throws, is at the line. A chance to give Stanford the lead. The night that Kiki Irfan has had tonight, 25 points. I'm surprised. 
Car Lanevere going with the freshman instead of her junior captain. She may, I mean, still got four minutes left in this overtime. Two point lead for the Cars. Brown, both in this matchup with four fouls. And Candy goes to the left off the window. Frank will keep. Oh, she carried it. Look, there's no better way to spend a Sunday afternoon Ooh. with a game like this. Well, except if we had your nachos. Well, we did have a little nacho, and we were on a couch. <laughs> See something here with just the one big in at a time. And not the two together. Vergara with four fouls. Still playing. Stanford switch that now. Brown. Oh, nice step through the baseline. Gets a second chance. Misses that. Tipped up and in. Gary Anthon wants it. She'll face up. Where do they go with Brink out of the game? Kiki goes to the left and scores and ends up getting hurt on the play as she limps back down to the other end to play defense, holding her right knee. And Brink immediately off the bench. Akanawa, it goes. Count it for Duke. The foul ended up being called on Agara, who has fouled out. That was her fifth. Buzgana is back in. Who's only played 11 minutes today. And here she is. Twenty-three points, ten rebounds. In her twenty-eight minutes in some foul trouble. The last time she missed a free throw was February of last season. That initially would lead you to think that it was a cramp, perhaps, with Ariana, as Brent now has made 70 in a row. They're trying to work out Kiki on that bench. Duke with the ball and a one-point lead, approaching two minutes to go. Bear gets into the lane, floats one up, no. And then is able to come in and tie up. Brink and Duke will keep it. Mayor is just a sophomore. Yeah, she missed the shot, but doesn't give in, give up on the play. And Brown will go to the free throw line. Her first trip. Duke's 10 for 12 on the day. 68% shooter in her career for Kennedy. Two, two point Duke lead. Looking to continue the string of upsets to open up the brand new season in college basketball. I love the parody in women's basketball now. Every time you turn on a game, you're going to get a show. Brink muscles down on the board. Raina there has done a nice job of really running the offense for this Duke team. This is on the three. They go back to Brinkier, who's got a career high with 27 today. That's what you got to be thinking if you're Duke. That Duke, that Stanford wants to get the ball inside. Dimitri Pagano with the offensive rebound and may have saved Stanford there. That might be the biggest rebound of the game. Bogswana comes from the back side in to get that offensive rebound and get the foul. Ariathan will come in, so here it's Kiki and Brink together. Bogswana 6 of 7 this season from the free throw line. Utah and Iowa top five this week. 
Kansas State needs to be ranked. Hardy with a tip and a backcourt violation called on Duke. I think Jackson was the last one to touch it. Tip and then tip. Oh, I think, yeah, Jackson got it. That's Stanford's ball. And Duke doesn't have to foul. They can just be patient and try to get a stop, and then they got a rebound like nobody's crazy. <laughs> yeah, right? Ooh, dangerous. <laughs> Brink, they swing it. Lapolo for three. No. Duke's got it. Duke's running with it. Okonawa, off balance shot, and they had a chance to hold it. Now they got now I got a foul. Yeah. And they go after Brink, who hasn't missed in forever. Yes, they're down one, but taking the last shot, because you only need two to win it. Even if she gets both, still a three-pointer away from tying it if you're Duke. Got to believe Lawson's going to call a timeout and advance it. She's three shy of tying the NCAA record, and she's got her team up three. Three Jackson is down on the low block, making a move up top, and Ashland's got it. Defended by Clardy. Gives it up. Jackson got